Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. So I'm going to be filming a video which I have wanted to do for quite a long time, but I thought now would be the perfect timing because it's the start of an academic year. It's September. Everyone's going back to school, university, college, whatever it may be. I myself, I'm going back to do a master's. And so I was like, I kind of need to remind myself how to actually study and so i thought i would share how i got the grades that i did at cambridge so for those of you that don't know who i am my name is holly and last year i graduated from cambridge having studied biological natural sciences for three years in both my second and third years apparently i topped the year i never set out to do that and I don't really know how, I still don't believe it, but I'm just here to share with you some of my advice and take you through how I approach academic years and how I got the grades that I did. But I'm actually gonna use timestamps so you can jump to different sections if you want to, or you can watch the whole thing because for me, doing well in exams is definitely not a crash course. It's very much far from that. It's not all about the exam season and the revision leading up to all of the exams that you have at the end of the year. It's more of a long-term process. So it starts from day one and it finishes with like results day so for me it is very much a long-term pipeline if you've been around on my channel you'll have probably heard me refer to that before so yeah if you do enjoy the video and you find it useful definitely like it comment down below subscribe and hit the bell if you want to join us because as i said i'm going on to do a masters and yeah it's the start of a new academic year for me but anyways okay so the first thing is all about mindset this might seem trivial but before we jump into the nitty gritty details of studying and revising i just wanted to address the mindset as i said before i never set out or planned to top my year it's never been something that i've wanted to do i literally just wanted to pass my exams and get a 2-1 at cambridge to me everything was literally just about hard work dedication and commitment to my studies i also just think when you start trying to compete with others and your peers it just creates a very unhealthy mindset and so i just really tried to focus on me and what i was doing and what i was achieving and learning i mean my only competition yes was myself and i do put a lot of pressure on myself but i never said to myself that I want to rank first sort of thing and I don't think anyone should do that as I said I just think you should adopt a growth mindset in particular I always say to myself that I never want to finish an academic year saying that I could have worked harder or put in that bit more effort you know I want to finish feeling as if I worked hard and I'll get the grades that I deserve and I'll be happy and pleased with them and myself a final note and kind of disclaimer is that I didn't just study I studied a lot yes and I worked really hard but I did do quite a lot of other stuff so I danced and I was heavily involved in like the competition team at Cambridge the dance competition team it took up so much of my life and I loved it and I also did YouTube along the side so that took a lot of my time editing filming videos and stuff so yeah I didn't just study okay so onto the juicy bit of the videos and i'm gonna walk you through what i do throughout the year first of all and then take you through my exam season and how i revise and all of this is going to be in the context of my final year my third year just because it's most recent and i think that that is when i really worked out how best to study and revise sort of thing everything just came together and i was like this, this works, works for me works. okay so we're gonna start off with making notes and for me this is so important i make a combination of handwritten notes and then type notes the handwritten notes if you've been around on my channel you'll know that they have to be done and made and created on plain paper i cannot use lined paper like no don't give me that paper i will turn it down it has to be plain paper i have a whole dedicated video on how i make my plain paper notes and i will link that on the screen somewhere and down below i'll also do the same for others that i mentioned in this video and if you do pick up on anything else that you want more information on i can make more videos within this series that i started last year called my exam secrets so do leave that in the comments down below and i'll pick up on it i have heard some people say that note making is a pointless exercise and I mean, everyone can have their own opinion, but for me personally, I find it so, so valuable because I organize my notes in a very clear and concise way that makes perfect sense to me. And for both my handwritten and typed notes, I create them in a very precise protocol. It is so so exact it has to be done in this way so my notes were based on the content that was delivered to us in lectures but something that was really important for me in final year especially was the addition of extra reading and extra information i'd found through reading papers online this was a requirement for third year you had to go above and beyond and do your own research sort of thing i would first of all go to a review paper so a science review paper is a very broad overview of a topic and then when i wanted more detail i would then go to the paper 
papers that were referenced throughout that review paper so that I was kind of refining my search and not spending loads of time finding the articles myself. And then when I would read the articles and the papers, yes, it would take some time, but I would always be pulling out the same information. And again, I can talk about that in another video because it's quite detailed and it's quite extensive. So yeah, I had to read papers and I had to integrate that into my notes essentially. So yeah, this is what took up most of my time throughout the year. I'd have lectures and then I'd go away, make my own notes and you know, it was just an ongoing process. And then the second thing I wanted to talk about was organization and having organized folders. Again, this does sound quite simple, but genuinely I had to have my notes organized in folders and then within those folders everything would be divided accordingly so that whenever I needed to go to a set set of notes I could find them really easily and so yeah I'd be making my notes and filing them away in folders and just building up a huge pile of notes genuinely I had so many notes we're not gonna think about the amount of paper that I use when studying and that's why I'm thinking about making digital notes perhaps but you know it had to be done. Okay, so the third thing I do throughout the year, this is again another thing that took up a lot of my time, maybe even more than the note taking. I don't know. It was to put what I had learned in the lectures and my supervisions into practice as soon as possible through writing essays. So something that I need to say about my subject, biology, and my final year in particular was that everything was assessed through essay writing. So I needed to write as many essays as possible and honestly I wrote so many essays in my final year but a lot of my topics i would try and write an essay or at least an essay plan i would always start with an essay title i'd find an essay title from a past paper i would then make a plan write the essay submit the essay to the lecturer have it marked get the feedback use the feedback and then repeat it again i'd sometimes have multiple essays being written at the same time but you know, I wrote a lot of essays, okay? You can apply this to any sort of practice questions. It doesn't have to be essays, but you just have to practice and get into the habit of doing questions as soon as possible. The feedback is also the best thing because you can have that and you can see where you're doing well, where you're doing not so well, and then constantly be, you know, trying to improve yourself. As I said at the start, adopt a growth mindset. The fourth thing that I wanted to say is basically related to this idea of practicing or putting what you've learned into practice so you have to make mistakes this is going to sound counterintuitive but you have to make mistakes throughout the year because your exams are when you're trying to not make mistakes right so you have to make those mistakes and those errors throughout the year so that you can recognize them and then not repeat them in the exam basically Part exemple. i think that's french right please somebody tell me that's the way to say for example in french so yeah par exemple i made a video quite near to the start of my final year when i just had a mental breakdown and i was crying over an essay yes i was because i got really really bad feedback i did so badly in that essay just because i basically did not answer the question at the time i thought my whole life was crumbling but to be honest with you, I'm so glad I made that mistake. You learn so much more from failing than you do from succeeding. So it is okay to fail. Make the mistakes, the errors, okay? I'm also just gonna say as a side note, because I often think we fall into this trap, please answer the question. It's so easy to not answer the question. But yeah, I'm just gonna say that is a huge piece of advice and something I always remind myself, answer the question that you're being asked, okay? Essay or not, answer the question. Okay, so the fifth and final thing that I'm gonna talk about with regards to what I kind of did throughout my year is I essentially wrote a dissertation that formed like quite a big chunk of my final year mark. So yeah, with my dissertation, I spent a lot of my final year working on that, perfecting it. And I was really, really happy with my mark. I got a first, I got 85%. And you'll be happy to hear that you are in luck because I already have a video on my dissertation, how I wrote it from start to finish. Definitely check that out if you are writing a dissertation, in particular a science dissertation, but you can apply it to any kind of subject, I would hope, at least some of the points I mentioned. Okay, now we're gonna move on to like revision. And when it comes to exam season, what do I start doing then? Okay, so we're gonna jump straight in with the first thing that I always, always do. I stand and swear by this method because I do it all the time and I just have to do it. I am just gonna say, first of all, that by exam season, I hope to have finished most of my notes from all my lectures. I will still be doing some, but my revision really does have to focus on memorization and learning the content as opposed to writing it out. The thing with natural sciences at Cambridge is that you're still learning in your third term, learning new information, you have lectures still, so you have to balance like the revision and the new content that is being thrown at you, so it's quite hard to get the balance right. But in my third year, 
it wasn't as bad as second and first year let's just say that so what i do is i get a scrap piece of paper it's just any old bit of paper that's plain preferably and i just write things out from memory i will essentially pick a topic that i want to revise and when i'm totally unprepared like i've not looked at my notes sort of thing i will just write what i can remember out from memory so i'm really 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 trying to remember it will hurt your brain but you have to do it because the point of this is that once you've done that exercise you then go over your notes and you start to actively learn the material you can then hopefully see progress so every time you do this exercise so you write things out from memory you should be recalling more of the content and you should be hitting most of the details by the end and very close to your exams okay that's the point of it so yeah that's the first thing i want to say because as i said i swear by it and going into my masters i will probably do this on my tablet now instead of using paper just to save paper but you know writing things out from memory is honestly the best thing to do like just scribble anything that you remember and it's really gonna test your brain and then moving on to flashcards so how do i basically use flashcards in a really efficient way to learn and revise something that i always get asked when i use flashcards is holly what do you write on the flashcard you know what am i actually writing down the simple answer to this is that i write down everything that i do not remember so whatever i struggle to remember when i'm writing things out from memory i transfer that information to a flashcard so putting these two techniques together writing things out from memory and using flashcards i start by writing things out from memory as i said and then when i review my actual notes either my plain paper notes or my typed notes i will essentially look through them and whatever i didn't manage to remember when i was writing it out from memory i put that onto a flashcard it's struggling to stay here so i have to have it on a flashcard so that's the logic behind my flashcard making and then the way i kind of structure writing things on a flashcard is on the front side i just basically write a question and then on the back i like answer the question i'm now going to talk about memorization techniques i'm going to talk about two in particular the first actually works wonders for me i don't really know how but i am a very formulaic person shall we say when i'm like making flashcards or i'm writing things down to try and remember something i have to write down the number of points I'm trying to hit or remember sort of thing. So for example, using the flashcard example, I have a question on the front of the flashcard and then on the back, I'll have the answer. On the front, I will also write down a number and that number refers to the number of points or things I'm trying to remember. And for me, that works, as I said, so well. So I'm gonna give you an example. This is yes, in the context of biology, but it's not a very complex example. I remember one lecturer in third year being like, you're studying this cancer course, right? The first thing that you have to remember is the causes of cancer. And there are six main ones. On a flashcard, for example what are the causes of cancer and then i have the number six underneath or times six on the back i would have those six causes of cancer my answer the six things i needed to remember i have to remember six things and in an exam like i'm thinking cancer, cancer. Causes, of causes of cancer, cancer. There, are there are six that i know, about, I know about, about right that number helps me so much i do have other kind of memorization techniques shall we say but these two first came to mind and so the second one is oh, it's not really a technique but it's basically coming back to my notes and this might just mean me i'm not saying i have photographic memory i don't but with my notes what i try and do is i try and like picture that page when i'm trying to remember a piece of information i try and picture where it is on that page and once i can locate it and pinpoint it it helps me to remember it i don't know how and why but it does i can't like zoom in and focus on what it's saying as i said i don't have photographic memory but pinpointing it on a page and picturing my notes in my head really just seems to help me so yeah that's another reason why i make notes okay so the next thing i'm going to talk about is something i call summary sheets this is a sheet of a4 plain paper and this is essentially what i will look at right before the exam so the morning before an exam or the evening before when i'm revising or cramming shall we say but basically i have this summary sheet where i write down all of the information that i still fail to remember so most of the time that's information coming from my flashcards that i've made because i know that i have my notes i have the information that i don't remember on my flashcards and then the information that i still struggle to remember on my summary sheet so basically before i go into an exam i'm looking at the information that I am most likely to forget and that is just not sticking in here also on this summary sheet so i not only have the information that i don't really remember but i also have the main topics within my module so i kind of did structure it as if it was a mind map because within each subtopic i then right next to it some of the information that i didn't remember from that subtopic so it does have a bit more structure to it it's not just a piece of random paper with random bits of information that i struggle to remember on the next thing is essay plans 
I use essay plans to revise essentially. As I said, throughout the year, I write essays in full for like practice. But then when it comes to revision, what I focus on is essay plans. Similar to my summary sheets with essay planning, I use mind maps. But the reason why I really like to use a mind map is because often I don't really know how to structure the essay at the start. And so if I just note down some key ideas or key concepts that I want to include, and then once I can see them on the page, I start to draw out the links between them and I organize them into a coherent flow essays are not just about content they're very much about having an organized structure as well so yeah mind maps are really important when i'm essay planning before i do essay plans and normally i've done this at some point early on in the year because i've been writing essays anyway i collect all of the past paper questions and i organize them into similar topics and so when i'm planning essays i'll therefore just plan an essay maybe that covers all of those essay questions in one on top of that i do also make up my own essay titles as fun as it sounds Yes, I do that. Sometimes I do plan for those essays and sometimes I look at them and be like, Holly, why have you been so mean to yourself? Because I come up with the worst essay questions that are so difficult and I just hope that they don't come up in the exam. But you know, you have to think of the worst. The amazing thing with essay plans is that once you have them, and if you say go into an exam and a similar question comes up, like you've already planned it. You've already done a lot of the hard work. You've come up with all of the ideas you want to include. You've organized them. You've done like half the work. You just have to write the essay in the exam. I've had that happen to me. It's the best moment ever. I literally want to jump up and down and scream because I'm just so happy. But I know I can't do that because there are invigilators walking around in gowns and I would probably be thrown out. But you know, plant essays, plant as many as possible. And also I do write some of them out in full and timed because in an exam, yes, you are under a time constraint. You have to practice writing the essays with a hand that's aching and about to fall off. And so yeah, that basically brings me on to my final piece of advice for this video. It is repetition, drill it and drill it and drill it again until it sticks because otherwise it's not gonna stick and you're gonna forget it and you don't want that. So repetition, despite being boring at times and a very long process, you want to walk into those exams with as much information in here as possible. And you're gonna feel most confident in yourself. You have to trust that your brain has it stored in here and you're gonna be able to write it down on the paper when you need to use that information, okay? Trust me, it will pay off at the end. That is basically, I think, everything for this video. Or everything I wanted to say anyway. As I said, I can obviously, yes, make other videos and I can continue this exam secrets series as I called it last year. But yeah, wherever and whenever you're watching this video, I hope it gives you some motivation and inspiration to go and, you know, work hard, study for exams and feel good about it. Because yes, studying can be daunting at times, but when your hard work pays off, it's honestly the best feeling ever. So trust me, trust yourselves, trust what you know. And yeah, like this video if you enjoy it, found it useful, comment down below, subscribe, hit the bell. And also if you want to get yourself a banana hoodie, which is uh, from my sister and I's Nana collection, the link to that will be down below. And as always, I will speak to you very soon in another video. Bye. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, this is Jay.